Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video lecture, we are going to study about prenatal growth of maxilla and mandible in a very simplified language, okay? So let's begin. All should keep in mind that there are no great limits to growth because there are no limits of human intelligence, imagination and wonder. Wishing you all a very imaginative and wonderful day ahead. So as you can see in the picture, what is growth? There is no universally accepted definition of growth, okay? As you can see, growth can be increase in the size or increase in the proportion or we can say growth is a progressive complexity, okay? And with the prenatal embryology of maxilla, okay, th this process occurs around fourth week of intrauterine life, okay? So here in this image, you can see there are two bulges, okay? One is the mesenchyme which is covering the forebrain, okay? The grayish portion is our developing forebrain and there is a depression in between these two bulges the lower bulge is pericardium and the depression is formed by developing stomatodium which is our primitive oral cavity okay the floor of this developing stomatodium is formed by the buccopharyngeal membrane okay and this buccopharyngeal membrane separates the developing stomatodium from the foregut and all the process occurs around fourth week of intrauterine life correct fourth week of intrauterine life in the region of our head and neck six pharyngeal arches appear okay so out of which fifth one disappears as soon as it appear okay so in total we can see five pharyngeal arches out of which the first pharyngeal arch is called the mandibular arch and it is responsible for the development of nasomaxillary complex okay now what does this pharyngeal arches do and why they are so important See, pharyngeal arches give rise to the connective tissues, skeletal units and soft tissues in the region of head and neck. The various structures in the head and neck regions are developed from this only. Okay, so this slide is very very important to crack the concept of cleft lip and palate. Okay, so what is frontonasal process, maxillary process and mandibular process? In the first image, you can see there are three structures. Okay, the first one is your developing forebrain. In the middle portion, you can see a structure like resembling mandible. It is not actually a mandible, but it resembles mandible and the lower orange portion, which is your developing pericardium. Okay, so what is happening first is there is a thickening on the lateral side of the forebrain, which are nasal placard. Okay, now come come to the second image okay image b what happens in here is this nasal placard they are sinking in okay and the forebrain portion is coming downward in between these two depressions which creates the frontonasal process okay and the both the depressions on each side of the frontonasal process they are nasal pit now frontonasal process is the mother of two other processes okay the process in the middle is the medial nasal process and the two processes on the lateral side are the lateral nasal process and these two processes are part of frontonasal process only okay and you can see the greenish portion between the pink and this mandible like area that is our stomatodium okay now this mandible like resembling structure on the dorsal end of it there is a thickening okay which is our developing maxillary process now this maxillary process it grows ventro medio and cranially okay and then it gives rise to the maxillary process ossification center of maxilla is very important okay maxilla has two ossification centers primary ossification center appears for each maxilla separately right and left around seventh week of intrauterine life and secondary centers for ossification at zygomatic nasopalatine and orbitonasal areas what do i mean by ossification center is first there appears a center in this region and then the process of bone formation of these bones starts okay now the development of palate is again a very important topic okay so it is formed by the contribution of maxillary process okay the yellow portion which we are seeing in this image and the palatal shelves which are still developing okay it is given off by maxillary process only and the anterior orange region of frontonasal process they form our palate this is a beautiful diagram of development of palate okay so development of palate occurs around 8.5 week of intrauterine life and the fulfillment of palate is through intramembranous ossification okay in one line i can say that what do we mean by intramembranous is first there appears a kind of membrane into which 
your osteocytes come and the ossification process begins okay so in the image a you are seeing the primitive palate and the maxillary process okay primitive palate is formed from frontonasal process right now the now the brownish part you can see the palatal processes which are developing towards the nasal septum okay from the maxillary process and then both the palatal processes are fusing with the mid palate and raphe okay so according to one theory it states that both the halves of the palatal processes fuse in the midline okay fusion first occurs in the midline then it fuses in the anterior region okay our primitive palate and posteriorly there is a soft palate where no ossification occurs okay because soft palate is soft there is no bone in there right and it is very important to keep in mind that mid palatal suture ossify by 12 to 14 years now coming to the prenatal embryology of mandible okay again this is a very beautiful picture okay you can understand it very clearly so the first structure to develop in primordium of lower jaw is the trigeminal nerve okay and then the branches of trigeminal nerve it gives off lingual branch and the inferior alveolar branch as you can see okay and from inferior alveolar nerve again divides into the mental and the incisive branch now at the bifurcation of inferior alveolar nerve you can see this red dot okay that is our initial ossification center for mandible which appears around 6th week of intrauterine life and the green portion is macular cartilage it has a vital role in the development of mandible okay so macular cartilage is like a money plant okay money plant needs some kind of support to grow right similarly mandible needs macular cartilage to ossify macular cartilage acts as a guide okay and then it soon disappears now the macular cartilage when it disappears still few structures are there which are the remnants of macular cartilage and they are the mantle ossicles okay incus malleus and steps then spine of sphenoid anterior ligament of malleus and sphenoid mandibular ligament and the period when macular cartilage appears is 41st to 45th day of intrauterine life here again you can see the macular cartilage okay and the remnants of which are incus and malleus okay and as well as the sphenoid mandibular ligament which attaches with the lingula the process of ossification of mandible includes two different process okay a part of mandible develops through intramembranous ossification and the other part develops through endochondral ossification in one line if i want to say the difference between the two intramembranous as i said first of all the membrane is laid down and then the ossification starts okay and in the endochondral ossification the first cartilage appears and this cartilage induces the bone growth okay so mandible develops through these two different processes intramembranous ossification is in the body of the mandible except the anterior part okay where are symphysis menta is there and the ramus of the mandible till the mandibular foramen this portion of mandible develops through intramembranous ossification and through the endochondral ossification symphysis of the mandible in the symphysis of the mandible there first appears a cartilage okay a secondary cartilage which gives rise to the ossification or the development of bone in this region and then the ramus above the mandibular foramen and the two processes of mandible they also develop through endochondral ossification So this was all about prenatal growth of maxilla and mandible see you again in the next lecture with postnatal growth of maxilla and mandible thanks for watching see you in the next video